play. And Townsend averages 16 turnovers a game. He's done a great job of taking care of the ball. Pettis is going to drive strong to the rack. Layup won't go. Terrell Williams with the rebound. Right back up, and it won't go, but he is fouled on the play. I believe that's going to be number four on Dupree. Yep, it is. Awesome. Dupree. Awesome. And back to the line goes Terrell Williams. The Explorers are 8 for 11. Re- Williams, 28 points. 11, now 12 rebounds, and 6 for 7 from the strike. Great move by Pettis. Just couldn't get it to go, but Jarrell was able to get position right in the front of the rim. Williams hits all sides, and it can't stay down. Rattles out. Two things are just astounding me in this losing streak for the Explorers. It's a foregone conclusion. The Explorers are not playing very good defense in the stretch. I'm not even going to debate that. The Explorers need to tighten it up. But the consistency with which teams are hitting tough, contested three-pointers with no time left is bizarre. And the layups that the Explorers are missing on the other side equally is bizarre. I have to agree with you on both points. Williams makes the second free throw. And the Explorers are down one with under six to play. Morris beyond the arc. Here's Phil Moore. Now Brown, Connor on the near side. Brown meets him at the top of the key. Mills is guarding him there. Shot clock is at 15. Morris into the paint, hangs in the air, shot off the glass, no good. Murray fights for the rebound, but he was canceled out by a teammate. And so there's eight on the shot clock because that shot never hit the rim. They fire at baseline. Filmer loses it out of bounds. The Explorers get a big break there on a miscommunication by two Explorers who could have had the rebound. And I'm really surprised Pat Kennedy is not pleading his case to the official, saying, look, somebody from LaSalle had possession of that ball. We should have had a new 35 on the shot clock. A chance to take just their second lead of the half, this time down with 5.30 to play. Pettis finds Sherelle Williams, drives on Fillmore, and a foul on the play at the top of the key. It's going to be number six on Towson. No shot. Number three on Fillmore. So that would be huge to get number four on Fillmore right here. Pettis is going to run the inbounds. Williams is on the near side. Diagonal block. They're going to switch with Murray. Instead, fired all the way back. Brown's going to steal it at midcourt. Probably got away with a travel, but instead he'll finish up with a layup, and the Explorers turn it over. On the inbounds and trail by three, 71-68. Yeah, that was a definite walk by Brown, but he made a great play to catch that ball. Just a sloppy pass from the baseline by the Explorers. Mills find Dern near side. Now on the foul line, Darrell Williams is going to drive. All kinds of contact, foul and one. Darrell, Eric Murray was contested underneath, but Darrell Williams with the layup and the fourth foul. Now it's going to be on Fillmore, number four, and a chance to tie it up with a conventional three-point play. Darrell Williams, almost half of the points in this game for the Explorers, now 30 of the 70, and a potential another one on the free throw line, which would tie it. And it does, 71 apiece. Darrell Williams taking this team on his back. With another career high. 71-71, under five to play. Morris finds Brown. Near side. This is Connor. Backdoor cutting Fillmore. But they can't get it to him. Now Morris beyond the arc. Far side. Connor top of the key. Connor between the circles. Guarded by Duran. Shot clock is at 10. Connor looking to drive. Duran guards him on the near side. Picks up the dribble. Now top of the key. Brown looks to drive. Stolen away by Pettis. Pettis down the baseline. Has Gums with him alone. Takes it to the rack. Hard foul. And it's going to be just a two-shot foul. I think Earl tried to sell it to get that extra one. But Earl Pettis with his second open court steal. And Gums gets his fourth. So the Explorers can take the lead with 4.30 to play. 71-71 tie. Pettis, great anticipation on the wing. Right in front of the Towson bench. And he wasn't going to let Brown make a miraculous shot that time. Now it's up to Pettis to reclaim the lead. 80% from the stripe. And misses. Returning for Townsend is not before Brian. Four is now Dupree. 8 for 12 from the free throw line, but another one will give them the lead here. Dupree will check back in for Gums. Gums, Dupree, and Fillmore all with four fouls. So the Explorers can attack inside with Williams and Murray. Pettis, second free throw for the lead. Got it. Earl Pettis with six points. Four of them here in the second half. And the Explorers now lead at 72-71. Well, here's where they need to really get it done on the defensive end. Dern is guarding Connor. Connor picked up the dribble. Entry is denied. So back to the top for Brown. Far side Fillmore's beyond the arc. Good work by Murray. But now Dupree with a foul and a bucket. And then Murray kind of lost him second time. 
An easy layup. Sam Mills had the drop down, commits the foul. And just like that, the Explorers' leads have been seconds here in the second half. And now they could be down by two if Dupree completes the free throw. Eric denied him on the low block right side, and then Dupree just went block to block, lost him, and made the shot, got the foul. Dupree makes the free throw, and it's a two-point game. 74-72, 4-0-8 to play. Thurin looking to drive, back out to Mills. Mills going to take the three. Sam Mills! Big three for the Froshy, and the Explorers are back on top, 75-74. He had made eight of his last 11 three-pointers coming into the game tonight, and he has really come alive, averaging 11 points per contest in the last three games. Elmore top of the key comes near side, Morris. Murray fronting the defense of Dupree. Yeah, that was his first field goal tonight. He has four points, but a big three for Mills. That's Connor. a pretty shot he has, too. Guarded by Dern. Now Fillmore at the top of the queue with nine on the shot clock. Got it stolen by Pettis again in the open court. No one will stop him. He'll lay it in, and the Explorers are up by three. Earl Pettis with three steals now. Great anticipation by Pettis, basically doubling up, not going down in the post. He came from the block up to the elbow, seeing the dribbler, and just knocked it away and went the other way for the layup. 77-74. The Explorers on top with 3-10. Enthusiasm in Tom Gall Arena for really the first time all night on this break game. Shotcock is already at 14. Brown looking to go baseline, and he's fouled on the perimeter. It's going to be team foul number eight in a one and one situation. With 3.01 to play, down to the wire we go again. The Explorers with the lead, but Towson's on the line. A 77 74 score. I'm Tom Gall Arena. We'll return after this. Ladies and gentlemen, Andorra MRI, a private physician-owned radiology facility with offices located in Roxboro and Flower Town. We offer high-field MRI and open MRI for all of your patient needs. So for service and convenience, for excellence, for advanced orthopedic imaging, choose Andorra MRI. In Roxboro, call 215-482-4800. In Flower Town, call 215-836-9010 or visit them on the web at www.tristateimaging.com. The largest provider of exclusive outpatient imaging in the tri-state area. Hey, LaSalle fans. It doesn't take an econ major to know Beneficial Bank has some sound financial wisdom to pass along. Take our campus checking account. LaSalle students get a free Visa check card that earns rewards points, free online budgeting software, ATM refunds, and more. All with no monthly fee and no minimum balance. Campus checking at Beneficial. Stop by our home court office at Chew and Worcester or online at thebeneficial.com. Starting now, Beneficial Bank, member FDIC. The 2011 Explorer Club Auction takes place Saturday, September 17th at Tom Gold Arena, and we want to make this year's event the best yet. The Explorer Club Auction is the marquee fundraising event for LaSalle Athletics, and all proceeds go directly to support our student-athletes. Exotic getaways, golf packages, dining and hotel packages, jewelry, sports memorabilia, authentic LaSalle team gear, and so much more is up for grabs. Your purchase at the auction and financial support go directly to support student-athletes at LaSalle, but more than that, it's a great time for all. Mark it down on your calendar, September September 17th, 2011. We could also use your help. Donations, manpower, sponsorship, and underwriting opportunities are all available. Call us at 215-951-1606 or email explorerclub at lasalle.edu. The LaSalle Explorers have not been on the downside of the 500 plateau this season, and they're trying desperately not to make it the first time at the end of tonight's action. They lead 77-74, 301 to play. Brown hits the front end of a one and one for the Towson Tigers to make it 77-75. Brown now with 19 points. 